stations. Make ready for heavy seas. Fire control radar detected. Velik. Lose them in the storm. After leaving Albia, we set sail mid-morning for the island of Ponza. The wind was around 20 knots and the sea state was very confused. But with two crew and two experienced sailors on board, what could possibly go wrong? As it turned out, quite a lot. By the time we reached Ponza the next morning, we had damaged our dinghy and outboard motor beyond repair. The life raft had fallen out of its locker, self-inflated, somehow activated its EPIRB, one of the stand-up panel boards had snapped its holding lines and flown overboard and the activated EPIRB had set off a search and rescue that resulted in a jet aircraft doing a high speed pass and very low pass on our boat. So what went wrong on what was seemingly medium grade conditions? The loss exceeded $15,000 and was subject to an insurance claim and the following is how I explain the issues to the insurer. Licensed to Chill is a 54 foot Alibi catamaran designed by the Frenchman, former Triman racer and naval architect Loic Gobford. Loic is seen here demonstrating the dinghy launching system. The design has its pros and cons. It is no doubt an easy to deploy system but it has the disadvantage that if the dinghy fills with water in the stowed position the weight of the water could snap the ropes that hold it in place. When I purchased the boat I was advised to store the boat on the tramp if the conditions were bad. On this passage the conditions were not bad but there was these really strange two metre vertical columns of water being thrown up by the numerous submarine mountains under the sea which was something I had never experienced previously. Tards and I noticed the columns of water and that some of the waves were ending up in the dinghy. I checked on the water in the dinghy half a dozen times and each time I checked there was little to no water and what water there was was emptying out of the drain hole. My mistake was that I stopped checking. An hour or so later, we all heard a loud bang. So loud, in fact, that my initial thought was that the crossbeam had failed and we were in big trouble. I ran out of the saloon and went forward, expecting to see that the boat was broken. But when I looked around, initially at first I could see nothing wrong. I lifted up the dinghy hatch and what I saw was that the front two ropes holding the dinghy had snapped while the two at the rear remained. The dinghy was upside down and trailing. We lowered the sails and I lowered myself into the water and swam the dinghy which still had the motor attached to the stern where we pulled it up onto the stern of the boat. On first looks the damage did not seem that bad. The transom had been ripped off but it looked repairable and the engine seemed okay from the dunking. When I checked the transom what I saw shocked me. The bung that prevents water from entering the dinghy was now sitting in the bung hole. When we stowed the dinghy back in Olbia I removed the bung and placed it in the floor of the dinghy. What obviously happened was that a big wave had washed into the dinghy, floated the bung, and as the water flowed out of the bung hole, the bung was carried into the hole and stopped any more water from going out. My only comfort is that other Alibi 54 owners have lost at least one dinghy, and in some cases they've lost two dinghies as a result of this system. The loud bang we heard was the outboard motor getting slammed into the main cabin crossbeam due to the bow of the dinghy hitting the water at 13 knots and being slammed backwards. About an hour later, I heard the sound of a rope flogging under the boat and decided to check it out. Just as I was about to exit the saloon, out appeared a fully inflated life raft from under the boat. Tards was not around at that instant, and for a few seconds, my confused mind decided that Tards must have had enough and had decided to abandon the ship using the life raft. At the time, it was getting late in the day, and we were still doing 13 knots plus, and so I made the decision to abandon the dinghy, as I figured by the time we headed back, it would have been long gone. We had just started to recover from all of the dramas when Tard spotted a plane flying just above the water and coming straight at us. It was a jet aircraft and looked like it was going to hit us. It circled us a few more times, flew across our stern, waggled its wings, and then they just flew off. With the excitement over, I had time to reflect on the events and quickly came to realize that the life raft locker must have been smashed in by a wave. It then must have fallen into the water and the attached line must have pulled tight and inflated the raft. The onboard EPIRB was a manual activation type and so I have no idea how it activated itself. The activated EPIRB transmitted our call sign and soon authorities were out looking for the raft but found us instead and they must have decided that we were fine and went home which is something I wanted to do because the universe was talking to me. When you have a day that is fucked beyond repair 
That is the universe speaking to you. The universe had spoken, and next day we arrived in the small yet incredibly beautiful island of Ponza.